Uh, if uh, they, they stick to the plan, when their delinquency is extinguished, we'll waive all fees and perhaps interest as well. That's something that needs to be worked out with our attorney. Mark Jones contributed the following suggestions because I conferred with him by phone. He said, in cases where attorney Brown cannot accommodate a longer period of installment payments, more than one year, or if the amount of the attorney fees to be paid up front exceed 500 and the owner is unable to pay, we should ask KW to set up a generic installment plan to accommodate these long-term payouts. We would pay attorney Brown's fee, if any, and add that to the amount of the debt. Again, we would suspend adding additional late fees and if the payment plan is kept, as soon as the delinquency is cured, all late fees would be waived. In case of default in the payment plan, all late fees will be added back into the debt, and we will then proceed with whatever action is necessary for the collection, whether it's foreclosure or release. Further, at the present time, when a delinquency hits uh, the sum of $200 or has reached a particular age on KW's ledgers. The account is turned over to the attorney for collection. The committee recommends that when this trigger amount or this time expires, the account should be turned over to the finance committee of the association so that they can negotiate first a payout or eliminate the debt if it's an error in bookkeeping, which has happened, so we all know. And then if the finance committee cannot settle the matter with the delinquent owner, then send it to the attorney for collection. In this way, we can avoid a lot of attorney fees by trying first to make the collections and to make a reasonable plan. And uh, uh, Steve Mason says that KW can accommodate us with such a uh, uh, generic uh, payment plan. This means, too, that if we have somebody that has a big debt and they can't possibly pay it off in one year's time, we can be generous and make long-term arrangements uh, so that they can pay it. It depends on the committee and, and the circumstances of the debtor. Uh, this all has to be put into a proper form so that we know what guidelines are going to be followed. Uh, I was going to offer a motion tonight and uh, uh, Mr. Mason called to my attention that the contents of the motion had to be very specific about the, uh, the, the various terms that we're talking about and the power that's going to be given to the committee. So uh, I'd like to uh, uh, defer that until our regular meeting next Tuesday to give Mr. Mason, KW, and, and the people on the Finance Committee and perhaps time to get together and work out the nitty gritty of the plan. But I think that's making some great progress, and I uh, was very, very pleased to have a committee that cooperated uh, with each other and uh, have come up with such a good common sense uh, solution. Yes, Marcy, you had? Yes, I feel that uh, a lot of people who live here have gone into the... Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, forgive me. Go right ahead. Uh, you're right. You're by right. all means, sir, by all means, I go ahead. That's the proper protocol. You're right. I have agreed with you, so go ahead. Unfortunately, the law is very specific about how an association collects its money. The uh, board has no authority whatsoever to waive link fees. Any time the board takes any action to give any benefit to any unit owner, they have to do it for everyone. And the state law also is very specific. And they're also specific on when money is paid, what is paid first. The last thing that is paid is the maintenance. The first things are the, the, legal, the late fees, the legal fees, the interest, and then the last thing is applied to the maintenance. I don't have the book in front of me, that's from memory. But before you move or make any motion on this, I suggest you contact the attorney. Late fees cannot be waived for one unit owner unless they're immediately waived for all unit owners. You can't show favoritism. Thank you, sir. That's our, 
for deferring this until the uh, final action, until the next meeting. Yes, Mr. Chair. Well, there is uh, many, many cases where, for example, last December, uh, we didn't receive the coupon books in time for December's payment. Many people missed that small SBA loan payment of 5 to $15. That generated a $25 late fee. And because of the order of payment, they paid everything in full the following month, but they took out the late fee first, making them late again. It generated eight or nine months of late fees. And that's just going to be treated everyone will be treated equally in that mistake. You know, if there's a, a, a late fee generated an increase from an original late fee, we're going to go back to the original late fee and waive it for everyone. Well, do you know if the money was received in time and didn't have the coupon? Yes, we know that it may or may not have been received in time. So KW was at fault. That's, that's a good company. possibility. Well, so we're going to waive it for the, everyone. If the management company, now you see the management company doesn't follow our condominium documents exactly on the collections of monies. And we brought this up in a recent time, and they use a lockbox. It's another a third party entity. And they have to get a coupon with the, with the uh, check. Otherwise, they send it off right. to. But you recall when there was they a month send it off to the <laughs> 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 That's not correct. The lockbox is, is with the bank. It's not a third party. It's the same. The lockbox is with the bank. Okay. Whatever it is, you can't wait for one person. Not one. That's right. And you, unless you wait for all. So if you're going to have a blanket waiving, that's something else. I don't know if we're allowed to according to our condo laws. I don't believe it. It's a I don't know. From the state. I don't know if we have the authority to waive it in the law. I don't know for sure. I think before you move on that. You get, well, you, 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 get a, you get an attorney's opinion. That's all I'm saying. We have saying. already said that that's what we're going to do. Mr. Santos. One of the things you're neglecting to do is, if you're going to make a deal with somebody, you have to do an analysis of how they're going to pay. How much money do they have in the bank? A full analysis, not just say, hey, we're going to make a deal. You've got to pretend that they walked in the door and you're going to check them as if it's a new applicant. And that's the only way it makes any sense. Let me look right real quick. When the payment plans are made, make no mistake, the law does not allow anyone to, when the payment plans are made, the law does not allow anyone to waive maintenance fees. The payment plans are just going to be made as far as to um, a, a certain percentage down and a monthly, on top of the normal monthly, on top of that. So the, the only negotiation is going to be what that percentage is going to be and what that monthly payment is going to be. Um, and if you have to negotiate a waiver of late fees to collect a certain amount, let's say waive $200 to collect $5,000, it's been done many a times to do that. Uh, but we're not whatsoever recommending that you negotiate the waive maintenance payments because as you pointed out, the law does not allow any okay. type of maintenance payments. Wait. I understand. You're saying that the late fees have nothing to do with this uh, delinquency? They do have. No, I'm not saying that. But, but the law only addresses delinquencies. Right. Not, and if, if, if delinquent late fees are part of a delinquency, right. then you have to collect them. I know. It, it, the law identifies delinquent assessments, which is a maintenance assessment, not a late fee. Uh, if you don't mind, if you could show me where we can okay. do that. Well, that's why we're going to do some more research and come back and propose to it. Okay.
and some of these are discrepancies, and some of these are the result of accumulated late fees, and we'd like to get them settled and off our books because the banks look at our finances now in terms of how many units are delinquent. And whether it's $200 or $2,000, the bank just wants to know how many apartments are 30 days late. So by getting these off our books, we're improving our picture to the bank. And going forward, we need to get that delinquency down to 15% in order to guarantee bank financing going forward so that we can sell our properties with mortgages. Otherwise, we can only sell for cash. First of all, I'd like to correct my vote. It's not 15, it's 10%. Anything over that, the bank looks at a I'm negative picture. 50% of Freddie Mac and Jimmy Mae because they... Well, that's uh, why, if you want to quote Freddie Mac and Jimmy Mae, that's why we're in the process of the art. It's 15% check with your bank. I did. I was going to show you... 15. I'm sorry, 10%. I'd like to just add something in. One, as a... Well, getting to the delinquencies, I had a lot of owners call me uh, when the transition happened, and this is no blame to anyone. It was a very difficult transition. Continental didn't leave us with all the materials we needed. People who were good paying owners uh, who were ending up with, you know, uh, un unforeseen late fees because it was reported on time. And these persons, in my mind, who are now good paying owners who pay, but at one time suffered because of a glitch, a late fee, and now that whole thing is accumulating and accumulating, and they don't even know about it. And they are paying their, their fees. And many don't even know about it because they don't go in to check what's going on there. So this kind of thing can be cured, and some have come and you know, spoken up, and it's been discovered what the error is, and it's been cleared up, but a lot have not. So uh, to me, that's something that's you know very handleable and should be handled. And number two, to get to right now, uh, things pile up. Two hundred dollars. It doesn't take long to reach two hundred dollars, whether it's an error or a real thing. And uh, and uh, it goes to Bro, who charges two hundred dollars. So we, I believe that we should raise our ceiling. Not only have a committee that looks at the case before it goes to Brown to really determine why is that reading late, but we should also raise the amount at which point. Yeah, that's something to yeah. Yeah. It makes no sense, you know. I know a lot of sense. Yes. Uh, just a minute. The idea behind having anything that's getting ready to go for collection sent to the Finance Committee first is because we can uh, avoid sending it to the attorney in, I'm sure, nine cases out of ten. And so far as raising the amount that triggers that turnover, I think I'd rather get people when they only owe 200 instead of waiting until they owe five. Because you, the, the quicker you get to them, I mean, I, I would work with people who only owe 100 to, to get them off the books instead of waiting until they owe more and more and more. Because it, it only becomes impossible. They throw up their hands and they can't make any arrangements. So I, I wouldn't argue about the, the amount that triggers the uh, collection. Uh, thing. I think the earlier we get them, the, the, more, the more likely we're going to get to collect the funds. Is there any other comment from the board? Yeah, I want to say one thing. I heard this week from a unit owner that there are about 125 unit owners who are withholding their money and possibly putting it into escrow because in protest for a raise in an assessment or a, an increase in maintenance. Uh, categorically, you cannot do this. If you do it, you're shooting yourself in the foot you're going to be late, you're going to pay late fees, legal fees. If anyone here is doing that, putting money in escrow and protest, I caution you not to do it. It's against the law. You've got to pay when the money is due. How much is a late fee? $25. $25 late fees. Every payment you're late is $25. You get charged once. No, you get charged once. I got a first payment. Well, if you were late for your assessment payment. No. No. Okay. Let me tell you what's going on. Here. Okay, make it brief, Marcy. Okay, you have unit owners going into the office to see Howard. Howard 
closes his eyes, he doesn't see anything. You can go in there every single day. He is oblivious to everything. What does that got to do with the delinquencies, Marcy? We talk about the people who haven't paid. I know one person went to Scott and he took care of it when somebody had a problem. You need to have the man move himself and find out exactly what's going on. Mel had that problem that it comes out of the bank automatically. KW, whatever your name is, contacted us and said we owe a hundred and some odd dollars. He calls his bank and gets that Charlene on the phone at the same time. They work it out. They said, okay. The next day he gets a phone call from your office here saying, you know what, I want a copy of those checks. Come on, you're playing games. You know what, your, this company is really not doing the right job with the people. You have an awful lot of, of, of people who are being back, uh, paying late fees and interest and everything else. You need to get on the ball here. You need to go after how you need to go after your accounting and everything else. There's no reason that these people have to have these uh, charges. He never uh, had that before. May I, may may I respond, respond to that, please? We had uh, accounting people here from KW several months ago. And we asked them the process, and we asked them who places a unit owner into delinquency. And it boiled down to Howard Carr is the one that we were told uh, advised and placed the account with, their, with KW and gave the final authorizations to put it into delinquency. Is that correct? The process is our accounting department, there are controls in place, sends a memo every month to the property manager since they're involved with the day-to-day -day, uh, with a list of people that should go to the attorney that have reached a certain amount of days delinquent. Howard reviews that list and authorizes who goes because our corporate office does not know, for example, if a payment plan has been made with one of those or if a payment has been recently accepted and hasn't been processed. Why does he call the that should have been reserved for a board decision. Okay, well, typically the manager is involved with the day-to-day, -day, and because this needs to happen very quickly within the 24-hour period, because you still may receive a payment, um, and the office understands what's going on in the day-to-day, -day, so the manager always made use of it. In every case that I know of, they've made that decision. Well, I just want to say one thing. Probably in the last couple of months, I pulled at least a dozen people out of Bose. And here is the reason, because they were all, all correct. When I spoke to Howard, he said, you have no authority to interfere with our procedures. And I said, I have all the authority, I'm a board member, and that's my job. Now, when I spoke to Bo, he again wanted to chastise me. So I said, do whatever you want. But all these people are right, they're all good people now. One, in, one for example, lives here for 10 years, and they wanted to put her into foreclosure, for over $2,000. She never was late five seconds. But what happened is, when you guys took over, she wasn't aware because they lived in Columbia. So she kept going late, late, late. And when I got involved, I spoke to her husband who had a 954 number. He said, tell me what we owe, and I'll wire it in in two seconds. And Bo reluctantly waived all the late fees because what they did for a living, these people, is they are international CPAs. If we went into foreclosure against them, you would have the lawsuit as anchored. My point here is Howard is not qualified to determine who goes into collection and who does not. We're off the subject again. Why are we off the subject? That's delinquency. That's what we're discussing. That should be somebody that's qualified, not somebody who doesn't know what they're doing.